Now, sometimes it's tough to talk to aging parents about money. There was a recent survey by Wells Fargo that found 40% of the adult kids that they surveyed would rather discuss their parents' death than their finances. That is staggering. Uh, If someone came to you saying that they've been trying to get their parents to see a financial advisor to do that planning, how would you help them bridge the gap to, you know, unify, bring everybody together? Well, you know, first of all, we've had a lot of those conversations. I think of one client in particular that we worked with. I had five generations that we worked with together. So it was really amazing to think about, you know, what the older generation decision-making process looked like and how it was impacting. That was a a small uh, family that had a business together. And I think, you know, families need to look at it like a business because, you know, not having these conversations, we've seen so many families get ripped apart when something happens and somebody passes away. And it's usually because these conversations weren't had. And I know we talked about it actually last week at lunch, and we were talking about, you know, even our own family situation. You know, my, my dad, he passed away at an early age, and so... You know, my dad had a brother, my uncle, and then, you know, when my mom was a, uh, where my grandfather was a primary caregiver for grandma, you know, and then grandma passed away, you know, I I had an opportunity to talk with him a little bit, give him advice, and I said, you know, it it really doesn't matter uh, whether your wishes involve me or not, it's just a matter of making sure that your wishes are known, your wishes are documented, And you have spelled that out exactly what you want to have happen, because I think that's a lot of the times where uh, mistakes happen. Uh, I know uh, we had put together what is called the ultimate estate planning checklist. Um, That checklist, what we do is we go through things like beneficiary mistakes. And what I would say is that I've seen 90 percent of the time when we go through that checklist, uh, a mistake made. Maybe it's not having a contingent beneficiary. Uh, maybe it's a change that happened in life and those forms uh, didn't get updated. Uh, maybe it's a fact of not even having a beneficiary listed on something at all and you know things can get uh, probatable. So when you're looking at how do I talk with my aging parents, I think first and foremost, um, you want to make sure that it's an open conversation. Obviously, if it's mom and dad's money, they can do whatever they want. It's their money. But if they're willing you know, to get people involved, I think it's important to know that uh, – you know, those family members that want to contribute to a positive way to the conversation and help with solutions, uh, it can help out. Here's some of the things that we see, and I, I welcome what you guys see as well. You know, sometimes with aging parents, you have an issue of diminished capacity. Mm-hmm. Um, I can think of a client that uh, had to contact me uh, because dad was getting scammed by uh, some of these uh, foreigners that were trying to get him to send money. And, you know, dad stepped in, got us involved in that situation. Uh, because of the issue of diminished capacity. Had a great conversation with a lady in her 80s last week. Um, Just really well thought out together, and she's managing her own portfolio. But she's interviewing people because she knows she's starting to slow down a little Mm -hmm. bit. And she wants to get ahead of that. And before, you know, it gets to a situation where she has diminished capacity, if that ever happens, that she has somebody that she feels confident in that's going to do the right thing uh, in her situation. We also see a lot of times aging parents uh, and the conversation is about health care concerns or uh, maybe when one spouse passes <clears throat> away. Um, what are the areas that you're seeing? I mean, what are the things that you're thinking when you're talking with uh, aging parents and, and the reasons why they want to get together and the areas that you can help out on? Well, Nolan, I think one of the big issues, you know, I know this with my mother, you know, I, I talk about her a lot and a lot of my clients refer to her as their mom as well. So it's kind of cool. But, um, you know, one of the things you you run into with that generation is, one, they don't like talking about it. I mean, they just don't like talking about their investments. One of the things they for sure don't like talking about is is the fact that, you know, dying. You know, I've got a couple of family members. I'm I'm the um, power of attorney. And I'm the you know my mom's rock, and I take care of everything for her. But I've got a, a family member that refuses to admit or even think of the fact that she may die. I mean, she's not going to die. Well, she's 85. You know, I mean, yeah, I want her to stick around as long as possible, but the fact and reality is it's going to happen. And to to deny that thought process and to think that it's not going to happen and burying my head in the sand because I don't want to deal with it is not doing any favors for anybody at that point. You know, um, it's it, it can be a very stressful conversation. I think what I'm finding is just like you mentioned, the clients that you were talking to, Nolan, my mom has basically 
finally got to a point where she's admitting that I want to sit down and make sure that I got everything put in place. You know, I think what happens is you get to a certain point where you understand that you need to do something, Mm -hmm. and then you lean on, uh, you know, that loved one, that um, executor or power of attorney or family member, whoever it may be, to help you out with that. You know, um, yeah, it's a difficult conversation, but it's it's important conversation to have. Yeah, you know, I, I think it's very important. I agree completely, and I think sometimes the issue comes down to fear of losing independence, especially well, sure. when you start talking about long term care issues. I could see in my in my uh, personal situation with family um, when that conversation came up, um, it, it just became. Uh, almost a turnoff where there was just a fear of once we started going down that road that the person, you know, in the family is going to have to go into a long-term care facility. And so I think one of the ways that maybe from the perspective of a child, uh, of an of a aging parent could approach that is to say, no, mom or dad, this is an opportunity to make sure that that doesn't happen. Right. You know, by getting ahead of it and, you know, talking about what some of their goals are, focusing on what it is really that, that they want for their future. Do you want to age in place? Do, you know, how, how is this going to work? And then just discussing the importance of planning because, um, again, it's going to help make sure that those wishes and those goals are met the earlier that we, we start planning for sure. You know, I had that conversation with mom, and I, I, and I told her, I said, Mom, here, here's the situation. I know you don't want to start thinking about maybe preparing for, you know, assisted living of any type. I said, but here's the important thing to remember, and and all of you listeners out there, this is something that's very, very important. If you are fully capable of making those decisions today, you may not be able to make those decisions Mm -hmm. tomorrow. Right. And when you can actually determine and put your wishes down and say, I want to go to this place, I want to have this treatment or this done, and you have control of it over it, that's important because there may come a point in time where all of a sudden you don't have that choice and then you're at the mercy of somebody else deciding what's going to be best for you. Mm-hmm. We understand that it can be a difficult conversation to have and not to put, put a doom and gloom spin on or anything, but you know, what if down the line a lack of planning leads to you know, a, a healthcare situation or a loss of job and income or just running out of money, that is a much more difficult conversation. Those what-ifs become what-nows, and, and that is something that can easily be prevented uh, with a little bit of preparation. Again, not the easiest conversation to have to, to, to bridge, sure, but uh, that's something the team at America's Retirement Headquarters can help you out with if you need that assistance. Give a call, whether it is your finances or a loved one's finances or, or just anything as far as it pertains to retirement, 419-794-3030 or go to the website arhq.com because we do. We genuinely uh, you know, value each and every one of you listening. We want to thank you so much for joining us here on America's Retirement Headquarters. Hope you guys have a great week ahead of you. Hope uh, you're safe out there. And guys, as always, grateful for the, the time that you spend with the listeners. And as we wrap up, I want to leave you with the final word. Well, great quote this week. It's retirement is wonderful. It's doing nothing without worrying about getting caught at it. So have a great week, folks. Uh, Thanks for tuning in this weekend uh, here on Toledo's largest talk station, 1370 WSPD. And uh, just remember, when you think retirement, think America's Retirement Headquarters. It's home of the Retirement Guys formula and America's Medicare Associates.